Greetings, dear friends, fellow programmers, and those aspiring to be. Welcome back to Marco Coding Academy, where we make programming fun and easy. Today, we're diving into the world of iService Provider in ASP.NET Core A. So, what I'm trying to say is that by the end of this video, you will know what it is used for, some best coding practices, and most important of all, why you should care about iService Provider and what makes it so important for us developers. Because by the end of this video, we will be covering everything you need to know about it, starting from the basic use cases, all the way to some more advanced ones, which we will discuss and also mention situations when you should consider them and when you should avoid them. So what I want to do here is use a real world analogy to explain the concept and what iService Provider does for us. Imagine you are entering your favorite cafe and you want to order a latte and you do not just willy nilly go to a machine and make it yourself. You go forth to a barista and ask her to make you a cup of coffee and she does everything for you. She grinds the beans, she makes the milk, she does everything and she just hands you over a ready, fresh and delicious cup of coffee that is just waiting for you to enjoy. It is fairly similar with iService Provider in ASP.NET Core. It is responsible for handing over to us all the necessary dependencies that we are requesting without us needing to worry about the way they get instantiated, their dependencies, which classes implement those dependencies and all of those things. iService Provider does that for us. Or should I say, it provides them to us. So let's get back to our serious life of a programmer and talk about what iService Provider interface does in reality. Well, simply put, iService Provider is an interface whose sole responsibility is to fetch and retrieve service dependencies that are being requested in the application. It is basically a core part of the dependency injection functionality in ASP.NET Core. And while we're on the subject of dependency injection, we have to mention that it is one of the core benefits that ASP.NET Core provides us with because utilizing dependency injection will allow our code to be way more flexible, maintainable, testable, and all in all modular and easy to follow. And basically it allows us to use services without the need for those services to create all the instances of other dependencies they need themselves. So they just request certain things they need in order to work properly and then they receive those instances out of the box. They do not have to instantiate them, care about their respective dependencies and things of those sorts. They just say, I want this and this service and basically dependency injection gives them to the service requesting those services. Right now, if you do not have a strong, solid understanding of dependency injection, I highly recommend you to jump around my playlists because I have a dedicated playlist just to dependency injection in ASP.NET Core where I did my best to explain all the important concepts of it so you would have the opportunity to learn everything important in a single location. If you struggle with it, please spend some time looking at those videos and then come back and I'll be waiting for you here. So now that you are already familiar with dependency injection, we can continue our discussion about iService Provider. As we already mentioned, it is an interface whose main role is to fetch and retrieve services from dependency injection containers. You can think about those dependency injection containers as huge registries where each interface is connected to its 
actual concrete implementation. And when we request some service, we can then head back to that dependency injection container and see which is the actual instance of the concrete class that we should return as a result whenever that certain service is requested. It doesn't have to be an interface that is being requested, but it is beneficial because you will be able to benefit from polymorphism. But even if it is not, you can just specify for this thing, I want you to return me a new instance of this thing. And this thing has to implement this thing. I hope you are following along. Basically, the one thing responsible for fetching those instances is our iService provider. So to use iService provider, we first need to register all of our services that we want to request to be instantiated for us because that way iService provider will know exactly for which requested service we should give back a certain concrete implementation of that service. And once you have successfully registered all of your services, you can just use iService provider and you know that it will do the job for you and give you all the requested services you ever need. Even though we covered this, let's head to our Visual Studio and I'll show you how it works in real life. And here we are. In our Visual Studio, I have prepared a very, very nice example for you that is very simple, of course. So we have a simple interface called iEmail service and this interface has a single concrete implementation which is called default email service. And it implements iEmail service of course and it implements its single method called send email. So now that we have these, we also need to head to our program CS file and register those services. So as we mentioned, for our interface iEmail service, we need to provide a concrete implementation that whenever we request an instance of iEmail service, we will get this instance instead. That means that we will be utilizing a benefits of polymorphism in .NET, which means that we can basically reuse this type as a generic placeholder for as many concrete classes that implement that interface as we like and we can pass them as parameters no issues whatsoever so right here we have just specified that when i service provider wants to instantiate i email service it should actually instantiate default email service as its replacement because you cannot instantiate a new instance of an interface because interfaces cannot be instantiated. Now, when we go back to our controller, we'll see there that we are just creating a private field, which is going to be of type iEmail service. And then in constructor of our controller, we just inject the actual value for our email service. And this private field is actually going to be of type default email service. It's not going to be of I email service because when our I service provider tries to create a new instance of I email service, it will see in our dependence injection container that we have registered that default email service is a concrete value that it needs to return when we request I email service. And now we can just invoke this method send email at our liking, provided with parameters needed, that's it. Everything will be done for us. We never instantiate a new instance of email service ourselves. So what you just saw was one of the simplest and most commonly used ways to register a service in dependence injection container and then inject it through constructor or constructor injection to get a new instance of that service. And when you think about it, this approach allows us to get all the benefits of dependence injection without the actual need to spend a lot of time thinking and implementing all the necessary infrastructure to have this amazing behavior at our disposal. And on the other hand, 
if you want to have even more hands-on approach with your code and you want to instantiate services dynamically without actually instantiating them by using new keyword, you can do that by creating an instance and then use that instance of iService provider to get you an actual instance of whatever service you need. So let us head back to our Visual Studio where I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I have created a simple class that I will use just to show you what I mean. Basically, we have a private field of type iService provider and we inject a value into this private field through constructor injection again. And now we have an actual instance of service provider. And then we are using its method called get service to request a new instance of I email service, which is going to result in exactly the same thing that we had in our previous example with home controller. So the result will be exactly the same. We will get a new instance of I email service, which is going to be created for us without the need to use new keyword explicitly through the usage of service provider and its get service method. So right now we can just invoke my service and send email method that we were using before and everything will work as expected. Amazing. Now that we know all of this stuff, I think it's an amazing moment to extend on our knowledge and learn what are the core responsibilities of iService provider interface besides the stuff we already saw, because we saw that it is responsible for creating and retrieving instances of services that we are requesting. Here are its main responsibilities. The first and most important one is service resolution. So as you already know, iService provider will create and retrieve service instances for us based on dependency injection containers that we have created by registering our services. The second thing it does is it is responsible for service lifetime management, which basically means that when we define and register some services with specific lifetimes like transient, scoped or singleton, iService provider is responsible for making sure that those services are created with those exact lifetimes. And finally, it is responsible for service scope management, which means that it is responsible for managing the process of creation and disposal of service scopes, ensuring that scoped services are handled properly. Now, it's all very nice and dandy, but why would we not discuss what are the benefits of utilizing this amazing interface called high service provider? And when we know what it does, let's now discuss what are the benefits of the things that it does. So the first and probably biggest benefit of utilizing iService provider is going to be code modularity because you will be able to just plug out certain implementation, plug in another one and ta-da, your entire application is behaving entirely differently because you just swapped which concrete implementation should be used for a certain service. It's as simple as that. The second benefit is going to be testability. Because if you are able to switch the implementation for a certain service and have entirely new implementation instead, you can do that to use implementation that contains your tests. Meaning you can test your code very, very effortlessly. You do not have to create complex mechanisms for testing. You can just plug and play with concrete service dedicated to testing. Point number three is going to be maintainability. Because in code that doesn't have tight coupling between services and their dependencies, you will have way easier time to manage and maintain the code because a lot less stuff is going to be necessary to be changed when you need to update something, change something, or eventually remove something or add something entirely new. 
because your code will be, as we already mentioned, more modular and less coupled together and less dependent on other pieces of code. And finally, point number four is going to be scalability. Because when you think about the previous three points, you can easily deduct that the scalability of your application is going to be improved significantly by utilizing dependency injection and iService provider for managing your dependencies in your project. So if you're working with large scale applications, the benefits exponentially grow. Make sure not to miss out on the opportunity to harvest benefits from dependency injection. Now, while everything sounds fine and dandy and everything seems perfect, in reality, you need to make informed decisions and try not to make some of the common pitfalls of using dependency injection in your code. So while talking about iService provider, for example, you do not want to use explicit notation to inject iService provider and then instantiate your services explicitly in the same way we showed in example before, because that way you're making your code more tightly coupled. Of course, if you need that approach, you can use it, but when you do not have to, you should evade using it because it has more tight coupling when compared to the original example we covered first. Also, you want to make sure that your lifetimes of services are correctly set up because if you do not, you will waste resources and performance and that way scalability of your application. And finally, you want to dispose of your services in a proper manner. You do not want to leave out the process of disposing services even though they are going to be disposed automatically for you, because if you remember and if you saw our previous video dedicated to disposal of services in ASP.NET Core, you will know that it already contains underlying mechanisms that dispose of unnecessary or expired resources for you, but you need to add your contribution to ensure that everything is behaving at 100% of the capacities. So be informed and do your best to make well-informed decisions in your programming day-to-day -day life. And that is it, my friend. We have covered what iService provider is responsible for, what are its benefits, use scenarios, responsibilities, and also some of the common pitfalls you should be careful about. Now that we know all this, I would like to invite you to practice all of this stuff, apply it in real life, and do some coding with it, because that is the best way for this newly acquired knowledge to stick with you. So, in the end, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you should consider taking a look at some other videos we have in our library that are all very beneficial and are carefully created to make sure that all of you guys become amazing developers. So if you like this, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, because that way you will never miss another upload. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Happy coding.